Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I'm Aditya. In this video, I want to show you how we can do pagination in Nux3 and we will get data from FastAPI side. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so I have this FastAPI endpoint. So I've created this app. With, there is an endpoint where we have users, which gives us a list of users with pagination. Now I have written a blog article on this. You'll see like in that article, I have explained all the steps of how we can have pagination. So I'll put the link in the description and I'll focus more in this video on connecting this fast API endpoint with our Nuxt app and then how we can achieve that pagination. So if I go to fast API Swagger UI, so you can get it on localhost colon 8000 forward slash docs. There you will see it has in the default, the user's endpoint. And when we make any request, we should get results something like this, where we have total, the total number of users, the current page, per page results, and the total number of pages. Now, going back to our next site, I'll be using this uh, app that we, or this website that we created for nested layout video. So please do check that video if you haven't checked the video about how to have nested layouts in Nuxt 3. So I'll put the link in the description as well, and we'll be using the same code. So I'll put the repo link as well, and that all will be in the description. So going back to the next side. So here I have index.view. There I'm just using this users list component that is coming from users list. And in next config.ts, I have defined the API URL. So I have, if you notice, I have taken it as a like two keys one api url over here so this is for the server and this one is for the client as well as server so whatever you put in public object in runtime config that becomes accessible for the client side javascript whatever you put outside of that public object that becomes accessible only to the server side javascript so we want this accessible to the client side so that when we make the refresh or the client side refresh because when the page change we want to make an api call to get result for the new page so for that we will need this public public key okay going back to users list so here we have this runtime convex using user runtime config composable then we need the starting page number so here i'll be using page number one and then we will use use fetch composable now here if you notice the first parameter is generally a url to this function or this composable and here i'm passing it as a function the reason being I want this to be more like a computed property, this URL return value. Why? Because as soon as the page change, we want that to be reflected in this URL. If we don't pass it as a function, what's going to happen is it's going to get like the initial value, which is going to be localhost colon, not localhost. In our case, it's 127.0.0.1 colon 8000 forward slash users. And the page, even if we go to page number two, this will be one. So to make it like change with the page number this url we have taken it as a function the other thing we need to consider about or we need to be careful about is this key now many people ask me what is this key over here well this key is used for caching so next what it's going to do is for use fetch or use async data or use lazy fetch you use lazy async data all those things it's going to cache your data using keys okay if you don't provide keys it's gonna make its own key for use fetch so just to make sure that it cache per page rather than caching all the results at once what we are gonna do is here we are gonna say okay for user list dash page number one so that's gonna be user list dash one that's our cache key for first chunk user list dash two cache key for second chunk chunk refers to page or the set of results that we are gonna get per page so we just need to pass over here so that when we have like refresh we, when we refresh the page and come back to the same page again or whatnot this is intact now next thing we need to do is get that users and pass it over here so here i need to say v if so first i need to see if there is data so data dot data now why i'm saying data dot data because if i show you again in swagger ui here we have data there we have list of users and then we have other attributes now I'm using defensive programming here just because if this data is empty, then in that case, it won't look for this data key. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error that an empty object is finding data key and it's not there, something like that. So just it's best to use defensive programming. Now, next thing is rendering the list of users. So here I'm going to say li tag. Now here we need v4. So here I'm going to say v4 user in data.data. .data. 
key will be user.id user.id and here i will say user.name perfect if we go back and see we should see list of users everything rendered perfectly fine now next thing we need to do is have that pagination so for that pagination i have created a separate component which is pagination.view now what this is going to take in is total number of pages so what's the total number of page and the current page okay so what's the current page number so here i'll bring that component so here i'm going to say pagination pagination p capital because that's our component and here i will pass total number of pages so total pages that's going to be data dot tot, uh, i guess we are calling it total or pages let me double check uh we are calling it total underscore pages this one total underscore pages and then we have the current page current page will be our page dot value perfect now what we want is we want to whenever there is a change we want to refresh this so here i'm going to say add the rate change because that's the event that we are passing it from pagination.view if you see we have defined emits the only thing is we want to bind it over here so here i'm going to say add the rate click on each button just dollar emit change the event and the page number so the page number will be this page number over here okay now in this case if you notice so if i just put it like this if you notice we don't have an array of like objects we just have array of numbers or actually it's not even an array we just have a single number so you could use v4 to take it as a range so if you are coming from python background in python we have for x in range and then we pass number let's say 10 so it will go from 0 to 10 in same way here it's going to go from 1 to 4 because that's our total pages in this case or one to total number of total pages and this will automatically have those four buttons for us or number of buttons for us depending upon the number of pages so here i'm going to say okay whatever is the change for that i will say pass the page number okay now here if i go back so this change will look for that function so i will say refetch that's the name of our function so here i will say refetch function refetch now the refetch will take in the page number so page number and what i'm going to do is i will say page dot value will be the page number and then i will use the refresh function that we get from use fetch so refresh and then just refresh the result perfect let's see what do we have so far so if i go over here uh so i think we have some error because oh no we don't have any error so there we have pagination button so we are on page number one now we need just need to make sure that if we are on that page this has like different color or highlighted differently so let's highlight that so pagination.view here i will add extra class so here i'm going to say class uh no not like this uh like this class and here i'm going to say okay i want this to be of bg uh, okay actually it should be like this and here i want these classes to be added bg uh, black then i want text of gray of 50 that should be fine we already have that and here this should only this classes should only be in picture if current page is not is equal to equal to page number actually so whatever is the current page if it's equal to the this one that's it that's our current page if we go back refresh the page all uh, right let's see if this has that bg black it should have it uh right it doesn't have it oh okay uh, so it's one two three four and here we are having page number current page that's gonna come from here let's quickly check what's wrong so page dot value so that's going to be one over here then we have inside pagination that's the page number page number current page so that's current page that's going to be one page number that's going to be one again so this sh classes should be in picture oh sorry this shouldn't be page dot value sorry for that this should be just page because we have page dot value it's not in script sorry for that so going back over here we have current page equal to page let's see if it's correct there we go and if i go to page number two there we have pagination perfectly done awesome so let's 
come out of dev tools there we go perfect so that's all in this video hope you enjoy this video if you like this video hit the thumbs up button if you feel this video is worth sharing with your network please do share with your network and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel see you in the next video till the next time goodbye